Last month, Jared worked for 40-hour weeks and made a total of $1,909. Approximately, what is Jared's hourly wage? So now's your chance if you'd like to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do 4 times 40, and that's going to tell us the total number of hours that he worked, because he worked 4 40-hour weeks. So I'm going to do 4 times 40, and that gives me 160. So we know that he worked 160 hours. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to take the total that he made, which is 1,909. And I'm going to divide that by 160 hours. And if we do that, we're going to get a number that is a little, just a little bit less than 12. But we are asked for approximately what is Jared's hourly wage. So the number that you get in your calculator sits so close to 12. We can say that 12 is approximately Jared's hourly wage. Now, if you'd like to, I'm going to put the solution on the screen that I typed out for you. And you can pause the video and study it if you want. And if not, that's fine too. The data in the pie chart gives a breakdown of how the test prep high school wrestling team's practice time is distributed during an average week. And the question says, students on the wrestling team at test prep high school have practiced Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 5.30. Based on the given data, how much time does the team spend on conditioning during a typical practice? Now, let me just read these numbers because they might be a little bit small on your screen. This says 20, 10, 10. 25, 20, and 15. And let me give you a hint here. The number that you really need for this question is this 25 right here. So this is 25%. And again, I'm just writing this out in case the numbers are really small on your screen. So let me give you a chance now to pause the video, try this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, let's talk about this. So there's a couple different ways to approach this question, but the main thing that you have to see is that, first of all, uh, conditioning is represented by this red portion here on our pie chart, and conditioning represents 25% of the practice time. So we know that the practices go from 3.30 till 5.30, so that's going to be two hours. And so what you could do is you could just do 2 times 0.25, so you could try to find 25% of two hours. But what I'm gonna do here first is I'm gonna take this two hours and I'm just gonna convert it into minutes. So one way to think about this is that one hour is 60 minutes, so two hours would be double that. So two hours is 120 minutes. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this 25% and 25% as a decimal is 0.25. So I'm going to do 0.25 times 120. And when I do that, I see that the answer is B30. Now, like I said before, you don't necessarily have to convert it to minutes first. You could just take this two hours and you could do two times 0.25. As long as you remember that the answer that this gives you is going to be in hours, right? So two times 0.25 would be 0.5. And so it'd be easy to do this and then say, well, 0.5, I don't see the answer over there. That's because you have to convert it back into minutes. So 0.5 hours, that's half an hour, which is equal to 30 minutes. So two ways of looking at the same thing here. B is the correct answer. And I typed out a written solution for you, and I'm going to put it up on the screen now. If you want, you can take the time uh, to pause the video, take all the time you need with this. And if not, that's fine too. Either way, when you're done, I'll see you on the next question. This video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who had some adversity and says, This will be my fifth time taking it and I'm so exhausted and nervous feeling like I can't pass. I'm always three points away or one point away. I take my test on Monday so hopefully this time when I take it I will finally pass. Unfortunately the test taker did pass with a 146 so I want to wish this person a big congratulations and I want to applaud this person's perseverance. What are the factors of 23x plus 23? is the answer A, B, C, D, or E. So now's your chance if you'd like to to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. So what we have to see here is that both terms have a 23 in them. So we can pull the 23 out, and we can write 23x plus one. 
now we can see here that if we took this 23 and distributed it, so if we did 23 times x, which would become 23x plus 23 times 1, which is 23, we would get back to the original scenario, which was 23x plus 23. So A is the correct answer here. Now, let me show you the written solution to this that I typed out. If you'd like to, you can pause the video, take all the time you need to study this. A 28-foot ladder is leaning up against the wall. If the distance between the base of the ladder and the base of the wall is 12 feet, approximately how high up on the wall is the top of the ladder? So, and you'll notice here that I did away with the multiple choice answers, and uh, I care more about the process here and the learning than we do the actual answer here. But I don't care if you, if when you get your answer, if you just leave it as a square root or if you calculate the real value, it doesn't really matter to me. So let me give you a chance to pause the video, try to figure this out. And whenever you're ready, uh, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically what we do here is we can start by drawing a picture here. And so let this line represent the wall. And let's say that there's this 28 foot ladder leaning up against the wall. So I'm drawing the 28 foot ladder now. And hopefully what you can see is that we have a triangle going on here, right? And this, this is our ladder and the ladder is again, 28 feet. And we're told that the distance between the base of the ladder and the base of the wall, which would be this right here. So between the base of the ladder and the base of the wall is 12 feet. So what we have here is a right triangle and that means that we can use a formula called the Pythagorean theorem for this question. So the Pythagorean theorem is a formula that looks like this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so if I draw another triangle right here, just to kind of demonstrate how we use this, the biggest side of the triangle is called the hypotenuse, and that's this side right here. So side C is always going to be this side, right? The biggest side of the triangle that's across from the 90 degree angle. And it doesn't really matter if you call this side A or this side B, but I'm going to call this side right here A and this side right here B. What we see here, if we look over at our triangle, is that we don't know the length of side A. And what we're asked here is approximately how high up on the wall is the top of the ladder. So, right, how big is this wall? How tall is the wall? And so what we have to do is we're gonna start by plugging in the numbers here. So again, we don't know what A is, so I'm just gonna put A squared. And we know that our B squared is 12. So 12 squared is the same as 12 times 12. So 12 times 12 equals 144. So I've got A squared plus 144 equals C squared. So C squared would be 28 squared. So let me do that. 28 times 28 is 784. So again, the name of the game here is to figure out the value of A, right? So what I'm going to do here is I want to get A squared by itself. So I'm going to subtract by 144 on both sides. And when I do that, the 144s cancel out and on this side, and over here, we do 784 minus 144, and that gives us 640. So we figure out that A squared equals 640. Now, a really common mistake, and it's okay if you made this because we're just practicing, but a mistake that I see a lot is test takers will get a scenario like this where they've got A squared equals some number, and they'll think that what you have to do is square this number to get the value of A. And that's a really, really common mistake. Actually, one of the most common mistakes I see with the GED test. So if you made that again, don't, don't feel bad, but I'm just pointing this out now. So if you get a question like this on your test that you can maximize your score. And so what you actually have to do is take the square root. All right, so we have to take the square root of both sides. So the square root of A squared is just A. And so like I said at the beginning, you can just leave your answer as A equals the square root of 640. And that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. But you could also do a, you could also actually calculate the value, which would be something like this, a equals about 25.29, something like that. So uh, whichever way you did it, if you just left it as a square root, like I said, you could, or if you calculated the value and got something very close to 25.29, if you got this right, really, really good work. I'm going to show the solution up on the screen now, if you'd like to pause the video and study it. And if you struggled with this, struggled with this, don't worry. Hopefully this was a learning experience.